So uh, to make a uh, narrow neck, the important part is the neck. So uh, first I want to use a small piece to show you the demonstration. Just focus on the neck. Because uh, you can feel the body and then later on if you got enough clay on your clay is quite straight, you should be able to pull up that, the, the taller and narrow neck. So I'm going to focus on this one for just the neck only. You leave about half of it for the neck? Yeah, if you don't have a total neck, yeah, you need to have quite a bit of clay for the neck. You got the whole sign in already? Yeah. Okay. Focusing on the neck part. First, you get a cylinder. So say if you want to make a uh, narrow neck, you don't want to have an opening too wide. So try to keep it limited of the width. So when you pull like a, a, a straight cylinder or the bottom volume, it should be opening smaller and it should be a bit thicker okay. and taller. So that later on you will be able to shrink and make it narrow. So basically, <clears throat> when you're making a neck, you want to chop from the outside and try to uh, get enough uh, lubrication and then uh, you want to spin your wheel a bit faster. Get shocked from using by using this finger. So if you have a more delicate, you can just use like uh, six point okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six point like this kind of method to pull out from oh. the outside and squeeze it. From, squeeze it. Oh, huh? yes. okay. <laughs> so that's the focus on the, uh, the neck only. And for making something like this narrow, uh, once you squeeze it in, your clay will be thick. 
but it's okay uh, just for the look. Um, if you are worried about uh, too thick, you can remove it by when you are uh, trimming it. <laughs> it's easier to, to trim it later. But uh, to, to be able to hold the shape like that, uh, the wall has to be a bit thicker. Okay. So that's the neck. So that's the uh, look of the inside. Something like that. Okay. So this is about uh, four pound of clay. Now I wanna uh, try to make the whole piece. That one I just uh, tell you to uh, focus on the neck part. Oh, okay. And you want to try to center a large amount of clay. Uh, I usually like to uh, use more of my finger tips to move the clay around. And let my right finger tips. Okay, that's center. And for making uh, tall neck bottles, uh, I would suggest you use a little bit more stiff clay, not too soft. Okay. After I open the hole, I build up the bottom. Using just the fingertip and you move your this too, I, I use this too to use, okay. Um, just uh, compress from the middle and try to go slowly to the uh, corner. Do you need enough to trim or do you need enough to trim? Like this, this is about a quarter of an inch. Four of each thing. And you trim the bottom still. I trim the bottom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want the base that that wide or you do? Uh the base I tend to uh, open it wider, but later on I can color it and make it smaller. Yeah, it's easier for yeah, so I open it lower, you see that? And it's easier for my finger to go that way. Yeah. If you open higher, it's harder for you to, to do that. So you could open it lower and wider, but later on you can get it all right in. Yeah. And since I'm making a taller piece, so I like to make it a bit narrow while I'm lifting. So now I'm calling it. There's a lot amount of clay here. I'm going to just since this is not very big, so my uh, thumb can my thumb can reach to the very very bottom. So I'm going to just give it a rough lift, pinch, and my right hand is helping it. Just give it a rough lift. See that I use a lot of slip instead of water. Use the slip to coat it.
before you try to lift, make sure it's slippery everywhere. At this point, is it about all the same thickness, or are you still getting thicker at the top? Uh, it's pretty much about the same thickness, except for the very top. It's not very thin, but you see that it starts to wobble mm -hmm. because my mm -hmm. cleat, I start with my cleat a bit soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, uh, you feel it, that it is soft. That's why I, I usually pull to the limit of the clay. That clay will tell me because once I lift it up, it starts to get wobble. That means that the clay will not only stand the, the top that you can pull it. Mm -hmm. So you have to stop pulling it up. Otherwise, it's going to collapse. <laughs> going to be uh, getting worse. Yeah. So this time I know that the clay starts to wobble here, so I will stop uh, pulling it up, but uh, to uh, expand it. Uh, neck later, but I want my bottom portion nice looking before I close it. And when you are using this wooden rib, you don't need to have any water or slip at all. And this will be slippery enough. You can see that I expanded my volume slowly and gradually. Okay, you don't have to 
all at once, try to you know, get a blow up right away. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> so the, the first I use this wooden rib and then I use this one. Uh, why I'm doing it is because when I throw, I have a lot of a throwing mark, so uh -huh. I'm using the wooden rib to remove it. Also, I compress the wall because yeah. this is stronger. Okay, so I get roughly the shape I, I do. I got it. And then the final shaping I usually like to use this one, the, uh, the metal one, because I can bend it, so I could have a different curve, many different curves. So that's why the final uh, shaping I usually like to use this, the metal rib. What? What fingers I was using? Using to okay. open it up. Okay. I will show you what's my finger is working on the inside. So that's the finger that has no clay. Right, so I kind of gently pull it out, pull, bring the wall out, and then very lightly touch with the outside to guide the curve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the position. Yep. I use uh, actually all the fingers. And okay. um, that's why I, when I toss a lot of uh, slip inside, you see that I toss a lot of it. But when I'm shaping it, I actually go to the bottom and grab some of the slip and coat it on my finger so, so it just moves while I'm shaping it. So by the end, if you come over here, there was, won't be any slip at all. You see that I'm now I'm reaching to the bottom to grab the slip that you cannot see. Mm -hmm. But I'm grabbing it, see that? So that is on my fingers. <laughs> and then... So no water ever? No just water. Just yeah, just, just uh, no water. While you're shipping, you don't need to have any water at all. Yeah. And this outside will be slippery enough. And for inside, I guess I toss a little bit more residual of the slip on the inside. And then I just grip it and then use that. So by the uh, very final stage, if you come over here and take a look, there's nothing there. It's almost, I almost finished the shape. Oh, yeah. Look how pretty yeah. that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. There's no slip. There's no slip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might want to blow it up a little bit wider. So good to see that you're throwing it slowly because I'm always. Speed is always so much faster. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so, okay. I, I do the opposite. I tend to slip. Really? <laughs> Take it off my foot and all of a sudden so way yeah, too slow. When, <laughs> when you are shaping, you don't need to have a full speed. Mm -hmm. Slowly, slowly expanding. Especially uh, when you are shaping, you see that thing? Where do I look? I look the uh, farther side of the curve. Um, so, when oh, I, my okay. eyes look there, I know which spot needs to go out a little bit, mm -hmm. then my hand goes oh. out a bit oh. there. That's where I look, the curve, the farther side of the curve. Mm -hmm. Your eye is not focused on here, it's the, the shape, okay, the shape, not the front. Okay. 
And one other trick, if you make something like this and you worry about, it's actually it's easy to collapse from here. Okay, uh, do a little cheating. Get some torch or gun to heat it up. Okay, help you. Okay, help you. Could do that. Yeah, yeah, or maybe here at the bottom oh. once you already down the bottom, right? And you yeah. got a shape already, but you wanna keep this part yeah. soft. Mm -hmm. And then later on it once this part is stiff enough, you can do pretty much everything. Oh, sure. It's easy, okay, easy. You could even set it aside for a while, couldn't you? Yeah, I could that is set, but you know the set it aside, usually the top dry faster than the bottom. Oh. So if you just use a heat gun or some kind of hair dryer to dry it a little bit, maybe five minutes, and it will be a lot more easier for you to, to work on the top, the, uh -huh. try to narrow it. But you see that? Now I'm going to shrink it. You see how much clay I lift? Yeah. From the neck, from the neck. Like a top right. third or something? Yeah, it's almost <laughs> one third of it. So now I've got nothing there you know, on the inside, and i got my bottom shape nice, so I can work on the top. more. Um, mm -hmm. This part is a little bit uneven. It's going to cause me trouble later on, so I like to uh, chop it off. Okay. And you see the how much clay I still have there. Mm -hmm. I bring it in because the shoulder here isn't quite as smooth there, so I'm going to uh, make it a bit thinner here and bring in the clay on the shoulder. And before I keep on doing it, I like to smooth the whole shoulder by just once I, I bring it in further, my hand cannot reach to the shoulder part to, to make it nicer. So before I close further, I like to get this part nice and smooth. So my fingers close underneath and quickly push it out. And while I have my metal rib on the outside to get a nicer curve. Uh, well, because I have a little bit deeper line there, so I turn it, I use this curved side. Because the straight side, I cannot reach it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like to remove the line on the shoulder. Do this. Sometimes I do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's like an ego. <laughs> Right hand always oh, stuck on the, the neck. Yeah, on the neck, yeah, I still thick. That's why I still have room for me to bring up yeah. the neck. Get it even. Mm -hmm. So, 
before I close it further, I like to fix this part. While my, my fingers can still reach to the bar. Thinning about that, just to just to get the shape, you know, the shapes like this, and then I want to go like that. Mm -hmm. So using this curve to to kind of uh, smooth it. It's harder to use the uh, the metal rip to thin it. Okay, so if you want to thin it, you can expand it, or you can pull it up. But by just compressed it, you you want to get it any thinner. Six point. I show a different method of uh, get it. Okay. Or if you next pick, just use the finger. So finger to chop it. But this is not very tall, so mm -hmm. I use the more delicate six point. Mm. And once I get it close and narrow, it's gonna get thicker, so I will lift it up a bit more. <laughs> it's very important when you start lifting that to keep the shape. You see that? You got many different nice curves here too. And even you can bend it. Bend it. So you get a many different kind of curves. I told you that when you bring it in, unless you uh, put a stick there, you can keep on throwing it, make it even thinner. But I, I don't do it here. I don't do it here. Uh, my way of doing it is I uh, wait till it gets dead hard, and then I just trim it, trim it out. It's a tall neck. <laughs> if you wanted to have it even smaller. <laughs> Just to try to mm -hmm. bring your wheel speed a bit faster while you do it.
Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right? Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> now we'll try. 